Hi guys and welcome back to a new video from the Omega Enthusiast. In this video, I will suggest the Accentual Watch Duo to all watch collector or hobbyists out there. Certain tools in this video will require brand names to get the job done properly, while some can go with generic. I will make sure to advise that as I in introduce each tool. These, these are tools which you can purchase off Amazon or eBay, so I'll include the names so you can search them up. Most of these tools will be very affordable and you do not need to buy all of them at the same time if you do not have the budget. This is not a countdown video of least to most useful tool. I'm going through these tools by random. If you would like me to produce more of these educational videos, please support the channel by hitting on that thumbs up button below and sub subscribe if you have not yet done so. That would be highly appreciated. The first item in this video will be a workbench or watchmaking mat. This is not the mat that I use during watch repair since mine has been attached it onto my bench. But this is a great mat that you can use to rest your watch on to replace strap or do watch repair as well. I would describe this mat as an advanced version of my regular plain mat. A mat does not need to be brand name. What I like about this are the extra feature that comes with it. With these features around the mat, you can rest your watch parts independently. Spring bar and buckle can rest on the bigger block to the left or above and so forth. You can also roll this mat up and carry it around to wherever you go. Whether your eyesight are 2020 or not, eye loop is very important to have, especially when it comes to examining the dial. The eye loop will allow you to see all the dust particle on the dial and allow you to thoroughly examine it to make sure whether it is a refinished dial or not. It comes in a few different magnifying strengths. Since they are not very expensive, you can buy a few different strengths such as 2.5 time, 3.5 time, and 4.5 time. When it comes to an eye loop, I like a brand name eye loop such as one made by Bergeon. I would also recommend getting yourself an eye loop wires so you won't need to use your eye socket to hold the loop. The wire wraps around your head when you put on the loop. You can just hang it around your neck or above your forehead whenever you're not using it. The must have tool is the tweezer. They will come in different lengths and different tips. The one I would recommend to a collector will be something like what I have here. You do not need to buy one with a brand name since they can be very expensive, but do buy one that is anti-magnetic. Since I am a watchmaker, I need to use the best available out there, and one of these cost me around $100 Canadian after tax. Try to use your tweezer for the right purpose, so you can always protect the tip. If your tweezer comes with a protective cap, do not lose it since it can be very useful when you need to carry it around without stabbing yourself. As a watch collector or hobbyist, the jeweler polishing cloth is essential. It can be useful for a few purposes. One example would be to help you polish tarnishes away on gold tone cases of any kind. Make sure when you purchase or order one that it has double layer. The inner layer allows you to polish and remove tarnishes while the outer layer is for finishing touch. The inner layer has polishing compound and when it gets very filthy, you can just give it a wash. You can always replace it since they are not very expensive. Can be purchased it online or ask your local jewelers if they can sell you one. This next item is a watch cleaning product. Some people will describe this as a watchmaker's Play-Doh. This product is called Rodico and the company brand is Bergeon. They come in a package of one single strip or double strip. One strip can last you for a very long time, especially if you're not using it for watch repair. To use it, you will only need to separate a small chunk that will be enough to last you for possibly many months. You can use a rodical to possibly clean anything that is watch related. I use it to clean the tip of my tweezer and screwdriver very often. You can always roll it to shape like a cone and use the pointy end to pick up dirt on the movement or dial or the underside of the crystal. 
One thing you must keep in mind is to avoid touching the printed font on the dial as it can peel off or make the font appear faded. If you see fingerprint or oil on a black dial, best to use a clean chunk to do the cleaning or you can leave smudges on the dial. Here is another affordable and handy tool that you should get. It is a wooden handle leather drilling needle for you to widen the hole on a leather strap to fit a thicker spring bar or to remove dry case back gasket or for digging out rust on the inside of the case. Just make sure to be very cautious when using this tool as you can accidentally stab your own finger. Here is an example of what I use this tool for. The next handy and affordable tool is the spring bar pin remover. They will come in many variations, but my favorite would be this one with one flat end, which allows me to use it as a puncher as well to remove links of metal bracelet. Some older watches or vintage Rolex will have quick spring bar release holes on their lugs. This is the tool that you'll need to get the job done with ease. You can also use this pin to adjust the length on your Brace, bracelet class. Sometimes you may decide to install a metal bracelet on your watch. So the next tool combo that you'll need are the hammer and the hole block to help you size down the bracelet. Of course, you'll also need the support of the pin remover, remover to use as a puncher. There are many other ways to size a metal bracelet, but I am old fashioned and prefer to stick to my hammer and hole block method. Plus, you can also use these tools to get other job done as well. So the type of hole block that I normally use is something like this one. And this is how you can uh, size down the bracelet. A vernier caliber gauge is a very useful tool in this hobby. You can use this tool to find out the lug width of your watch in order to buy the proper fitting strap. If you decided to sell away one of your watch, you'll probably need a vernier caliber to measure the diameter and length of your watch to provide them to your client. They are also very affordable and I su suggest that you buy a digital caliber as it is a lot easier to use. A spring bar kit is highly recommended for a collector or hobbyist. I always recommend that you begin with a kit of all sizes prior to buying refills packages of 10 to 100 pieces. Spring bar kit is handy for many reasons. Sometime while you are replacing the strap on your watch, the spring bar will flick off and you'll never find it again. I'm sure many of you have experienced that before. A flat head plier is another tool which is always nice to have around while you're working on watches. I use mine a lot when it comes to removing a very tight spring bar that is stuck to the strap. You can also use it to pull out a pin when you're sizing a metal bracelet. There are tons of these pliers available on eBay. Size and brand do not matter. A watchmaker's knife is a must-have tool and I recommend you to use one with a brand name such as Bourjon. This knife is made specially to open the back of a snap-on case back. I do not recommend a Swiss Army knife since I find that the blades are not the same. 
These knives will come with a single short blade or one with a double blade like the one I have here. I seldom use the short blade as I find the long blade is better to handle with. You can also use the knife to pop open the bezel of a watch or even use it to remove the strap on some watches. Like using any knife, please be cautious. Not every case back can be opened with a knife. Screw lock case back will require a tool with prongs like the like uh, this jack saw case back opener. There are many kinds of screw lock opening tool, but my favorite is the jack saw to tool. This tool is available in regular size like this one and also available in a jumbo size version to open larger size case back. You do not need to buy a brand name version of this tool since the generic version is almost as sturdy. When you buy this tool, it will come with many different prongs, but normally I stick to this one style which works on majority of case back. You can fit three prongs at a time, but I prefer to just fit two instead. Make sure to hold the tool and the watch securely while turning. I suggest putting a layer of plastic over the case back if you are afraid of slipping and marking the case back. You can also buy a two prong tool or the case back opening rubber bar. Do not un underestimate this bar as it can help you open a lot of case back without having to worry about scratching the case. You can always rest your watch on a watch cushion, such as this one, if you do not have a watchmaking mat. You can always buy the generic version as all cushion works the same to me. I use this cushion to protect the crystal of the watch while unscrewing the movement case clamp screws. You must own a few different sizes of screwdriver as they are extremely handy tools. Do not go cheap but buy the best quality made screwdriver like those made by Bershon. For the watch hobby, all that you'll need are flathead screwdrivers. I would say the four most common sizes are 0.8 mm, 1 mm, 1.2 mm, and 1.6 mm. Watch making screwdriver will have a rotating head for easy turning. Make sure to use the right size for the right size screw. No one size is universal. Here is a technique that I would like to show you guys while working on a watch using a tweezer and a screwdriver. While I am working on a watch, the tweezer will never leave my hand if I need to use a screwdriver at the same time. I need, all, all that I need is shift and switch the position of my tweezer to a different finger while I pick up the screwdriver. And when I'm done with the screwdriver, I can shift the tweezer back to my thumb and index finger. Sandpaper and sanding blocks are quite useful as well. Majority of the time they are used for sharpening your screwdriver head or the dull tip of your tweezer. The screwdriver sharpening holder can be very useful if you have difficulty sharpening a screwdriver with your bare hand. You do not have to buy the, the brand name version of this tool, but it is recommended to use this tool with sanding block instead of sanding paper. If you're able to open the case back of your watch, then I highly recommend you to apply a, a bit of silicon lubrication if your watch takes a case back gasket. This silicon lubrication is made specially for watches 
and they come in all kinds of um, different shapes container. Any brand name will work the same. You can also apply the crown as well with uh, some of these grease. Silicon grease or lubrication is used to protect moisture from entering the watch. Do not over apply as it can get onto your movement, which you'll be in trouble and the movement will require an overhaul service. Many older watches, such as those from the 1940s and earlier, normally do not take a crystal with a metal tension ring. If the crystal takes a metal tension ring, it will be too tight for this crystal lift to squeeze onto. The crystal lift is a very handy tool if you need to replace an old acrylic crystal to a new one, or you need to remove the dust particle under the crystal or on the dial. When using the crystal lift, make sure you do not over squeeze the crystal or it will crack. When removing the crystal, make sure to lift slowly so you won't slip and damage the dial or the crystal itself. Sometimes when you buy a used watch, the hands on the watch may not align perfectly because they are not perfectly set and maybe rubbing against each other or against the hour marker. That will cause the hands to misalign over time. In a situation like this, and the watch is not an expensive one, you can try and align the hands yourself. But to do so, you'll need the hand removing tool to pull them off first. I included this tool as essential since I've seen many collectors own one themselves. You do not need to buy a brand name hand removing tool. To properly set the hands, you'll need the hand setting tool. There are many variations out there, but this one I have will work on many watch hands. If, you, if you're trying to set the hand using a tweezer, you can leave marks on the surface of the hands. For the hand setting tool, you'll need to buy one with a brand name such as Bergeon. A generic hand setting tool can damage the hands, hence do not go cheap on this tool. If you're able to open the case back of your watch or remove the crystal, then the blower is a must-have tool. Keep in mind when blowing the dust particle off the movement to avoid the balance wheel, as you can damage the hairspring. If you damage the hairspring, then you'll be in big trouble. When using the blower, cover the hole above with your thumb and squeeze accordingly. A brand name blower will be easier to squeeze. The GS Crystal Cement is for gluing acrylic crystal. Majority of collectors or hobbyists are not watchmaker and will not know where to order watch parts. In case you buy a watch that takes a special crystal or the crystal is a little loose on the case, then what you can do is use the crystal lift to first remove the crystal, then apply the GS Crystal Cement around where the crystal sits and fit the crystal back on. Sometime before I install a correct fitting crystal, I will also apply a bit of GS cement for extra moisture protection. If you collect vintage watches or modern swatch watches, you must get yourself a poly watch. This item is for you to self-polish away scratches on your acrylic watch crystal. You will only need to squeeze a small amount onto the surface of the crystal and rub it with a piece of cloth. It is very affordable and extremely easy to use. Small plastic bag or eccentral to half. You can store all kinds of watch related item into one of these bags, including the whole watch. I have a very expensive Bergeon case press in my workshop, but to be honest, I use these generic presses a lot more. There are a ton available on eBay and I suggest you to buy a couple different kinds if you have a large collection of watches. 
Most of the time, the dies are interchangeable. Certain snap-on case back cannot be closed using the strength of your fingers, and you'll need one of these press to help you close them. Make sure for the crystal surface to only use the die with concave center to avoid breaking the crystal as you press to close the back. The dies will be made of aluminum or hard plastic. I normally will mix them around depending on the type of watch that I am using them on. As a watchmaker, I use this tool very often to install acrylic crystal with metal tension ring. The last essential tool in this video is the demagnetizer. My brand name demagnetizer is put away ever since I bought this cheapy one off eBay. I like it because it is very small and simple to use. The demagnetizer not only help you with demagnetize your watch, but can also help you with other problems as well. For instance, if your watch begins to run fast after you have dropped it by accident, or if the hairspring gets caught from a sudden shock, the demagnetizer can sometimes correct such issue. To demagnetize something, simply press the button to activate it and slide your watch away from you. Never slide back and forth as you will just be demagnetizing and magnetizing your watch. You can also use the demagnetizer to demagnetize your tweezer and screwdriver as well. That's the end of this video. I hope this video has been helpful to everyone. Please feel free to share it with your watch buddy or someone who is looking to start this hobby. You do not need to be a watchmaker to know how to use these tools. The tools in this video are recommended to all the watch collector and hobbyists out there. If you have any question or comment, please leave them in the comment section below. My website and Instagram links are also below this video. Please do not forget to support this channel by hitting on that thumbs up button below and subscribe now so you won't miss out on another future episode. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.